morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Monday. Happy morning, Life Scope Monday. Good morning, Erica. Hey, Facebook. Hey, Periscope. Hey, Instagram. Hey, Kim Bay. How are you? Good morning. Hey, Alonzo. Good morning. Come on in and give some heart love. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Janine. Good morning. Hey, Nina. Good morning. How is everybody this morning? Is everybody staying warm over here on the east side? I see Atlanta. I see, uh, I think, in the Carolinas, Texas. Folks getting snow. Hi, Emily. Good morning. Hey, Candace. Good morning. Folks are getting snow. Hey, good morning, everybody. Hey, Dr. T. Thank you for inviting people. Yes, so good morning, Robin. How are you? Hello, everybody. So you can share if you are on Periscope, specifically swipe right on the iPhone, up on the Android. You want to share. Good morning. Hey, love. How are you? If you're on Facebook, you could just share, 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 which I'm going to do. So I'm going to take a couple of seconds. Hey, good day, Maureen. Hey, Sharon. Good morning. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another weekly morning life scope with True Heart Speaks. That's me. Dietra Trueheart, your life purpose generator, purpose provoker, and I speak life mentor, helping you to get out of your own way and get to the business of living so that you can do life well. And today we're talking about self-worth over net worth. Um, if you saw my post over the weekend, I think it was last Friday or Saturday, um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about that because some of you don't follow me on Facebook um, or Instagram, and so maybe you didn't see the post. So come on in, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Give me a second to share. <clears throat> and then, hi, Demetria. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. So give me a couple of seconds. I'm going to share. And then we're going to get this party started. Um, come on in and give some heart. Give some heart love. Let me know you are here. Double tap that screen and give me some heart love. I want to know you are here, that you are in full effect. Say good morning, uh, not only to me, but to somebody else. Say good morning to the tribe. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. sharing and uh good morning hey jill how are you love hey sports mama hey there's a couple of people who just joined in on periscope good morning good morning everybody <clears throat> Kim Shea, how are you, love? Good morning, good morning. Hey, 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 good morning. Such glow. <clears throat> I don't know where that comes from. That's got to be lighting, Jill. Totally lighting, but thank you so much. Appreciate the compliments, the morning compliments. Um, my sinuses, I just, you know, you know, have me, <clears throat> I don't know, but at any rate, um, so let's see, did I share everywhere? I think I did. I've officially shared and um, we are officially alive so good morning everybody I'm just pulling everything up so I can see and read 
Um, hey, Jackie, good morning. All right. Hello, 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 everybody. So today we're talking about um, self-worth over net worth. And so before we even jump into that, let's double tap the screen. Let's do our due diligence and let's give hearts of worship. Let's double tap, double tap, double tap. Um, and really just take a moment. We are in the second week of December. We are, it's December 11th. Crazy. Um, how quickly this month is going by. Like literally I feel like we just said happy December. Like literally December 1st just showed up. And so by Friday we'll be midway through the month. And so let's double tap and just kind of give, um, you know, give thanks for this day we want to give thanks for this week we want to give thanks for this month we want to give thanks for this year we want to just you know be grateful right even though some of us do not like cold weather we're grateful that we get a chance to see all four seasons right good morning good morning good morning and um in some places i know people never get a chance to see snow and it's interesting because i have a couple of friends who moved to atlanta and texas and like their posts were like i moved here to get away from the snow and they literally got like snow so you all have to excuse me it's sinus time and so uh my nose is running a little bit but i'm grateful right just grateful for another day period right so um all right so good morning good morning good morning everybody good morning good morning i see y'all i see you i see you hey tamika hey ebony hey everybody so let's talk a little bit about <clears throat> today's topic um and really this week's topic and it talks about hello nikita how are you love um hey daphne how are you thank you everybody for joining thank you everybody for sharing and inviting followers to the morning life scope for this week's monday mo monday morning motivation and so we're talking about self-worth over net worth, self-worth over net worth. And so if you saw my post on social media, um, I'll read what I shared and then we'll talk a little bit about that. And so the idea behind this, it says, to be honest, this is something I've struggled with. When I have money, I feel great. But when I don't, I, I'm feeling not so great. No matter how much money you have or how little money you have, you have worth and you are worthy. It says, your value is not connected to what you have externally, but what you have inside of you. Although I believe that as followers of Christ, we are meant uh, to be lenders and not borrowers, it should never determine um, our value and worth. Um, however, too many times, it does just that, right? And so our uh, what we do as, as far as you know having money or things or whatever the case may be, sometimes does determine our value and our worth. And I says, you know, go be great, go make lots of money, you know, if that is your desire, like everybody has different desires, but never let it dictate how you see yourself um, or how you feel about yourself. Operate at your fullest capacity and let God's light shine through you. Remember that you're chosen. Remember that you're special. Remember that you bring something to this world that no one else does. Um, and believe in yourself, trust in the God in you, tell yourself you're worthy and then believe it. And so um, as I was writing that and even thinking about it over the weekend, I really wanted to share it today, especially our credit scores, right? And so we believe like, oh, well, if my credit score is not a 800, then I suck. Now, at the end of the day, like you definitely want to have a good credit score. Like you want to have a good credit score to your name. Like you want to be able to have options, right? I think the purpose of money um, is is options right it's a tool it's not you know to take over your life it is not to determine your life and i think at the end of the day good morning Winique. how are you at the end of the day um we want to be able to have access to resources that would allow us to be in a space to be a blessing to people right so that we can be a light so as believers right as christ believers we can let our light shine so that god you know um looks like the um the beginning of a great day love it hey love how are you um, and so I want us to be able to distinguish, like, I don't think that, um, you have to be poor. I don't think that you have to, you know, um, I don't, you know, but I also don't think that while you're poor, like while you may not necessarily have the resources that you are feeling some way about yourself because you're poor. Right. And so I think we have to distinguish and separate our self-worth from our net worth, our self-worth, <coughs> 
<coughs> from money, self-worth from our credit scores, our self-worth um, from materialistic things, our self-worth from all of those things. Because at the end of the day, who you are is not what you are and who you are is not what you have. And many times, society specifically will tell us um, the opposite of that. The society will tell us that if we don't have, you know, the bling, if we don't have, you know, the latest and the greatest, if we don't have all of this other kind of stuff, then who we are sucks. Then who we are, good morning to Chico, how are you, lovey? Then who we are is not, you know, is not the best. And so now, again, don't confuse um, my idea of, I believe that as, um, as kingdom, uh, livers, as kingdom believers, as Christians, as followers of Christ, that we have a responsibility to be good stewards of the stuff that God gives us. But I don't believe that we should worship the stuff that God gives us. I don't believe, I believe that we should worship the giver and not the gift. I believe that we should be in a space where when God blesses us, with things that we should be a blessing to other people. It should not go to our head and that sort of thing. But many times, and I don't know, like I think sometimes we're just raised not to really understand and value money. Like we believe that money makes us, you know, whatever. Like if I got a lot of money, you know, whatever. And I, there was a saying that I heard years ago that um, that money doesn't change you. It just magnifies you. And so if you are, you know, um, if you were greedy, you know, as a poor person, you'll be greedy as a rich person. Like it magnifies you. It doesn't make you better or worse. It magnifies who you are. And so if you're not in a space where you're a good steward of what you have, um, and that's the reason like a lot of times you'll hear things that say, good morning, everybody joining on the morning life scope. You'll hear things that say like people who win the lottery, um, literally will be broke within the next three to five years because they have no value of the money. And so they spend it on things that really are of no value. And so a lot of times we feel like our self-worth is connected to our net worth. And so for some of us, our net worth is negative. Like for some of us, our net worth is seven figures. And so either way, whether you're on one spectrum or the other, your self-worth cannot be connected to your net worth because your net worth can change in a matter of minutes, but your self-worth should stay consistent. Your self-worth should continue um, to be what it is, no matter what your self-worth, right? Your self-worth, who you are as a person, who you are as a person doesn't have to change because you make a lot of money or because you lost a lot of money. And for whatever reason, a lot of times we feel like, oh, well, I don't have any money, so I suck. I don't have any money because I'm not this, so I don't, I, I can't measure up. And too many times we're measuring up to the wrong thing. Like, and I'm, 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 you know, out, you know, just to give you a little background. So for me, I didn't grow up, you know, you know, not really having, like I grew up not really lacking anything. And not to say like we were rich because my parents were blue collar workers, but like I, there wasn't really anything that I didn't want. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't lack anything. I, you know, my parents, if I wanted it, I could possibly have it. I also worked. I had my first job when I was 13. It might even been 12 as a newspaper person. And so for me, I always had the problem was I was never taught, um, hey, everybody joining on the morning life scope, good morning. I was never taught really that money is a tool. And so for me, I just believe that money, as I got money, I could spend it and I could do whatever I wanted with it. And so as I got older, because I didn't understand money and that I believe that if I didn't have money, then I didn't measure up or if I didn't have a lot of money that I didn't, you know, um, that I couldn't compare to other people or if I didn't have the latest or greatest, like I grew up like that. And so I had to learn um, as a young adult and even as, a, and as, as an adult that your mindset has to change. And so when I started listening to people like Susie Orman and Dave Ramsey, specifically Dave Ramsey, who has a saying, they're financial people who used to, he says a say, has a saying that says, if you live like no one now, you can live like no one later. And so the, the bottom line behind that is, is that there is a sacrifice that goes with um, the lifestyle that you desire to live. And so, so many of us want the lifestyle, but we don't want the accountability that goes with the lifestyle. We want the lifestyle, but we don't want the stewardship that goes with the lifestyle. And so we want the nice things, but we don't want to, hey, Melissa, hey, Robin, hey, Scott, hey, everybody joining me. Um, hey, hey, uh, Tamika, hey, Tammy, how are you? And so th the problem is, is, is that when we get nice things, we feel nice, but when we don't have nice things, we don't feel nice. And so what I want you to really pay attention to um, this week and really, you know, uh, 
in the future, right? It didn't necessarily have to be this week. But I really want you to pay attention and look at the patterns of how you feel when you have a lot of money as opposed to how you feel when you don't. I'm going to say that again. I want you to pay attention to how you feel when you have a lot of money as opposed to how you feel when you don't. And then I want you to examine where that comes from. I want you to examine why it is that I feel some kind of way when I don't have a lot of money, right? Why is it that I feel like in order for me to feel like I'm on top of the world, I have to have a lot of money? Why is it that I have to I have to feel like I'm on top of the world? You know what I'm saying? Like, why can't I be content with where I am, with what God has given me in the season that I'm in? For whatever reason, we like to use that quote like, oh, you know, um, in whatever season that I'm in, you know, I've grown to be content. But many of us don't grow to be content. We're not content in that season because we're when we become used to a certain type of thing and it changes, it changes who we are. And so we this is why it is so important for me when I talk about helping you to get out of your own way and get to the business of living is really getting to a place where who you are uh, what you do, right, and what you have doesn't determine who you are and how you see yourself. And if you know anything about my journey, I've shared some of that. That that has been my transition. That has been my life story. Um, there have been many days and times where who, I, who, what I did for a living, I felt like determined who I was as an individual. And so I got to a place where when I was no longer in that position, when I was no longer in that space, when I was no longer operating in that place, that I didn't, I didn't know who I was. And so we have to get to a place of knowing who we are says I've done that. And when I had a lot of money, I felt secure. And then when it was used for car repairs, it made me scared and dig deeper into work. Absolutely, right? We have to know our value. And we have to know that our value is not things. We have to know that our value is not people. Um, we have to know that our value is in us, that it is in the God who created us, that, our, that God sees value in us, that he saw value in us before the foundation of the world, and that like even the gifts and the talents that you have, um, like you have something that is valuable, right? You have something that you, you yourself are valuable. You bring something to the table that don't let anybody tell you because you don't look like somebody or you don't do what the other person does. Like we all bring something to this table as individual as our fingerprint is. So are we right? We we're that that unique and that different. And so at any rate, here's and here's something else that popped in. Um, you know, when I say that, know that your value is not in other people. Um, I know that there are a lot of moms who get so caught up in their kids that their self-worth is in the worth of their kids. Their self-worth is in their kids doing well. Their self-worth is in, you know, is in their kid. Like, they basically, like, if my kids do well, then I'm, you know, then I feel like I've done my job. And not to say that you shouldn't feel like you've done your job, but if your kids go off, like, if your kid goes off and rob a bank, your self-worth is not tied to your kid going off and rob a bank because at the end of the day, they make choices. Like, when they get to an age of accountability, if you've taught them what you needed to teach them, your self-worth should not be connected to your children. It should not be connected to your husband. It should not be connected to your friend. Like, your self-worth, who you are as an individual, like, if your kids go off and they don't make the decisions that you feel like they should make, um, it, it's not connected to who you are and how you feel about yourself. It shouldn't be, I should say. It shouldn't be. Your job is to steward that little person until they get to an age of accountability to train them up. Train them up, right, as they go. Train them up. Train up a child in the way that they should go. And then when they are old, they will depart not from it. They will not depart from it. And so sometimes they do. Like sometimes they depart from you know, from from what you taught them because the, in their minds, they feel like their self-worth is connected to their friends. Their self-worth is connected to who they're associated with. Their self-worth is connected to wanting things or, you know, street life or whatever the case may be. And so I'm here to tell you that whatever it is, net worth, family, um, credit score, children, people, things, you, you, you have self-worth has to be has to be t like at the top of that totem pole. I was a mom and had to realize that I've given them the tools and laid the foundation and it's time for them to use those tools. And I um, had to reevaluate myself and invest in myself. Absolutely. And so it's interesting because um, I had a conversation with a couple of my girlfriends over the weekend and I realized that um, when I took my trip a couple of weeks ago, and I shared this with some of you, um, that that was like my first girl trip. I had never taken a girl's trip before. Um, but what I also realized, and, and I'm... Um, 
gonna do more teaching on this because I recognize that this is something I think that my tribe can relate to is that for me um I never saw my mom do that I cannot remember ever seeing my mom take girl trips like I think um, she may have gone to visit one of her girlfriends in Philadelphia maybe a couple times, but I know a lot of times she can her girlfriend came to visit us. But I really like when I say like on a consistent basis, I really do not remember my mother taking a girl trip. I do not remember my mother going on trips and like now my mom likes she likes nice things. Like my mom, I believe, liked nice things. Um, to be very transparent, I think that for her her self-worth is connected to things like she feels like if she didn't have nice things that she doesn't that she's not you know what I mean and it's not like a, a mark against her but I think many times we grow up not really recognizing that we're that our self-worth and our self-esteem and our self-value and our purpose is connected to things and other people and so I'm learning a lot about myself I've been very reflective this year and so I recognize that for her, um, you know, a lot of my life was modeled, it was modeled before me. Like a lot of what I saw or what I've done was modeled before me. And so I think that it is important as women, because I believe that that's my tribe, uh, women of faith. And um, I believe that you really have to check what was modeled before you right wrong or indifferent and evaluate how it affects you as an individual how you lead your life specifically as a mother as a wife as a woman as an entrepreneur as a it says when you set up your worth and things and begin following these things it doesn't bring happiness especially when the things you're chasing take you away from god's purpose and where you fit into his plan we have to be so careful of what we value that was sharon absolutely sharon i totally agree i totally agree and I think the hardest thing is, is that we get so caught up in it so quickly that by the time we have realized that we are in that space, that we're like literally like wrapped up in it. And so now we have to unwrap ourselves. And so, um, so let me, I'm going to close because it's almost 745. I'm going to pray. Excuse me. And we're going to, I'm going to let leave you kind of with this whole conversation that we're having. And I want you to um, really start thinking about, like, when you think about your self-worth. Hey, Ashley, how are you, love? Um, you know, how do you view yourself? Do you value yourself? Like, outside of things, like, if you didn't have the car, if you didn't have the job, if you didn't have the husband, if you didn't have the beautiful children, if you didn't have the house, right, um, if you didn't have the money, like, how, how, like, who are you at your core, and do you value her? Do you think that she's worthy? Um, do you think that she's lovable? Because some people feel like, well, if I don't have all of this stuff, then nobody will like me or nobody will. If I don't, and and that's a whole nother conversation, right? And so I come just to give you some nuggets in the morning to just kind of meditate and marinate on. And I think at the end of the day, I want you to think about who you are at your core. Um, what you bring to the table, right? And so if all of that is pulled away, like the, just the essence of who you are, right? The essence of who you are. What are you eating? Oh. The essence of who you are, I want you to value her. I want you to value her. Now, I believe that, you know, like I said, I believe that as, as believers, we are totally supposed to have dominion and we are supposed to um be good stewards and we are supposed to be blessings that we are supposed to be lenders we're not supposed to be borrowers um i be i believe in all of that but i think that that shouldn't be the ultimate focus i think that that's the result of seeking god that's the result of following god that's the res that's the result it's not the goal right the goal is not gifts the goal is the giver of the gifts right the pursuit right we are in pursuit of him uh, but aside from that like, just understanding that you are worthy, understanding that you are good morning, that you have something awesome to give to this world. That to And here's the other part, giving um, at your, um, your own discretion, not allowing people to take advantage of what you give, not allowing people to take advantage of who you are, right? And so I really want you to take some time this week and I really want you to dive into who you are. 
outside of, again, the job, you know, the degrees, right, the letters behind your name, all of that kind of stuff, right? And so who are you at your core? And do you value her? And for some of you men, um, do you value him, right, enough that outside of all of that, who are you? And do you value him or her enough outside of all of the stuff that we put on that says, this makes me valuable? This makes me, you know what I mean? This makes me, and I mean, there's so many different stories that I could give that I won't, but I just believe that, you know, like as God begins to strip you of things, like, rec you know, be mindful of what of, of of the lesson that you're being taught be mindful of what exactly it is that you are being shown because sometimes um what ends up happening is is is, is that we worship the things that god gives us but we don't worship him we spend lots of time with the things that god gives us but we don't spend time with him we're excited that we've got all of this money and we're excited and we hoard, you know, the money and or we, you know, we, we, we uh, talk all about, you know, our credit score and we got this and we got that or whatever. But underneath that, we're insecure, totally insecure, totally uncomfortable with ourselves, totally uncomfortable with who we are, totally, un totally uncomfortable. And so we really have to get to a place where the things don't become the thing that we worship and they don't take over who we are and how we see ourselves period and that there's nothing wrong with having nice things so long as nice things don't have you nothing wrong with having a lot of money so long as a lot of money doesn't have you nothing wrong with having house and husband and kids um, or if you, you know, or, you know, whatever, this was the message at church yesterday. Love the confirmation. Ooh, juicy. Love confirmation. So long as it doesn't have you. I always tune in for an on-time word from God through you. So appreciative for you in my life. I thank God and thank you. Ah, you're welcome, lovey. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, for this time and this space. Lord, we thank you, God, for um, this message of choosing self-worth over net worth and so we thank you for um just checking us you know through this weekly message this weekly morning life scope that for some of us um we've get, gotten so caught up in the things of this world even people we've gotten so caught up in just all of that and so um we're just asking god that you would help us to remain focused on you know, the most important things, and that's you and us, right? And so focusing on you, because obviously you created us, and you are the creator, and, um, you know, you give us what we need in order to operate at our fullest capacity, and so we just love you, we honor you, uh, but more importantly also, God, we want to make time for us. We want to make sure that we're focusing, that we're not taking so much energy to put into everything else, the, the money, the house, the kids, or whatever, that that we assume that our worth is in those things, that we're not worthy of that. For some of us, we don't feel like if we don't have it, we're not worthy. That if I don't have the nice things, if I don't present myself in this specific way, if I don't show up in this specific way, what society says or what whoever says that I'm not worthy. And that's, that's not what you say, right? And so you chose us before we chose you. We didn't choose you, you chose us. And so we're grateful to be chosen. We're grateful to be counted worthy. We're grateful that you loved us with an everlasting and unconditional love. We're grateful for this message to self-reflect um, and be in a space where we keep you first and not things and people first, where we get so focused on getting our money together that we forget the one who has blessed us with the money. And so... Just help us to keep things in perspective, Lord. Help us to be good stewards, but more importantly, help us to be able to know that we're worthy. Some of us just don't believe that we're worthy. Some of us, when we look at, some of us have never taken a look in the mirror and looked at who we are and just looked at ourselves at our core. And so help us this week to answer the question, who are we at our core? Who are we? Not what do we do and what do we have, but who are we at our core? Who are we at our core? And help us to listen, to get quiet and listen, like listen and pay attention. 
And so we thank you for this Monday. We thank you for this week. Um, we thank you just for this month. We thank you as the holiday and Christmas season is upon us. Help us not to get so caught up in that as well. Um, that we get so caught up in, you know, uh, just, you know, even just going in debt just for the sake of appearing to have a lot of money and appearing to have a lot of things and not being honest with people and ourselves to say, we can't do it this year. I'm choosing my self-worth over my net worth. I'm choosing, I'm choosing to be responsible. I'm choosing to do something different. I'm choosing to live as like no one else now so that I can live like no one else later. And so God, we just help us to make those hard decisions. Help us to make those hard decisions. Help us to sit in it and marinate in it and get clear on um, just valuing ourselves outside of everything else that just camouflages who we are. And so we thank you, God. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so um, Demetrius says that um, I had to check myself on my prayer life during the times of deficit to also um, be as strong in prayer when I'm blessed during increase. Absolutely. Right. And so. You know, when we have a lot, we're all excited or and sometimes what ends up happening is it's like it's either or. And so like when we're at a deficit, um, you know, we're that prayer life is on it. But then, you know, when we you know, when we when we get it's kind of like, oh, we forget who gave because we're, we're like we living in, you know, living in a luxury life, like living that glamorous life. You know what I'm saying? That Sheila E life. Right. And so then we forget to have that prayer time. We forget to be in communion with God because we, in our minds, we don't need him as much. And so be mindful, message delivered in full effect. Thank you, Dr. T. And so let's just be mindful as um, we begin our day and our week that we, uh, we, we're consistent. So we just came out of 30 days of thanks, right? And so... Part of that was to reinforce that there is always something to be thankful for, that there is always something to be grateful for, no matter what, in your highs and your lows, right? And so defining and protecting your worth is also difficult with social media and the age of instant comparison, right? Makes it easy, easy to become jealous or feel not adequate or off time with our plans for our life. Absolutely. And this is why I think it's so important, Ashley. And, and I agree, um, you know, um, this, this message this morning has been an ouch moment. And that's okay, Deanna, because I think for many of us, um, and I've said that, like, I struggle with that as well. Like, for me, like, I'll go through seasons where, like, it's just highs and lows, right? And so sometimes it's real consistent and sometimes it's not. And so sometimes, like, I have money and I think I'm like, I don't know, like I'm living a glamorous life and then other days I don't and I just feel like I'm feeling sucky about stuff. And so, and a lot of times it has absolutely, and here's the thing that you have to understand is a lot of times it has absolutely nothing to do with the money and everything to do with what's going on within you. And this is why we have to be so self-reflective to say, okay, well, what's really going on here? Where is this really coming from? Why is this really, why do we really feel this way? And so a lot of times keeping in reality, right, when we're looking at social media, that that's somebody's highlight reel, which is the very reason why I show up every single morning, not glammed up. I don't have all of the stuff in the background and my husband hates it. But for me, I needed my life scope to be real life. I needed my message, especially at seven o'clock in the morning. So you weren't going to catch me in no lashes and no made up or whatever. But that was the, the, the very reason I literally, yes, we have to take our internal temperature. I decided to show up some days in sweats, most days in sweats, um, and maybe a little lip gloss, and that was it because we, sh you know, we see the highlight reel. We see the great moments. We see what people want us to see. We don't see that a lot of times people are posted in front of somebody else's house, at somebody else, in front of somebody else's car, at a different event, you know what I mean? Or they walk past, you know, something, or they taking pictures, you know, in outfits that are not theirs. And so I think that we have to stay so focused, Ashley, on understanding that our our race is our race, our time is our time, our season is our season, because if not, we will get caught up in feeling like I miss my time. I miss, I miss, and here's the other part is sometimes we miss our time paying so much attention. Um, it says, I need the sorry I'm late. I didn't want to come see t-shirt. Listen, absolutely, right? Sorry I'm late. I really didn't want to be here. And so, and and some days it's like, sorry I didn't come because I didn't want to come. You know what I mean? And so when we talk about living a life that no one else lives now so that we can live a life that no one else lives later, like there is a peace of mind that comes with deciding like, you know, this is how I'm going to live my life and I'm going to live it. Un like this, that saying living unapologetically is not necessarily like I'm just going to, ah, 
it's literally like I don't apologize for not wanting to come. I don't apologize that today I decided that I like random like today is that day where I'm totally not I'm good. You know what I'm saying? And so let me go because I got to get Dallas ready for school. But this is totally a topic that we could talk about for hours, right, y'all? But I really want you all just to be in reflection, right? As Dr. T said on Periscope, take your internal temperature, check your pulse, like make sure you are not doing things for the sake of doing them. Make sure that if you're doing it, you really want to do it, but it's not connected to your self-worth, right? Like regardless, like if I do it or if I don't do it, I feel good about me. If I wear it or if I don't wear it, I feel good about me. If I have it, if I don't have it, I feel good about me. Absolutely. Sometimes makeup is just a mask for yourself. Yeah, it's like I had a friend years ago and she has now since um, stopped doing it. But I've had a couple of people who would wear makeup who will not come out of the, the house without makeup on because they're insecure about what their face looks like. And, you know, and I'm not talking about people who have like blotches on their skin or who are dealing with like alopecia or like pigmentation, but who have beautiful skin under their makeup but will not not wear makeup will not wear makeup and if that's you i challenge you not necessarily to come out with no makeup on but i challenge you to ask yourself why, what makes me feel that way that i have to come outside made up all the time and some of it is because you were told you had to right and so for me um like i never leave the house without earrings just because i don't know like i've never i just feel like i feel naked right but, um, like, back in the day, like, our mothers and grandmothers would say, like, you never, like, a lady never comes out of the house. Like, you always have lipstick on or you always have, like, certain things that would, like, where does this stuff come from? Like, this is why I'm telling y'all to sit in it and to be in a space where you can really figure out why you do what you do. Because some of you don't know. Like, well, because my mother did it. Well, why does she do it? Because my grandmother did it. Well, why does she do it? I don't know, right? Staples of ladyhood. Like, you come outside. Don't come outside with no dress on. You ain't got no pantyhose and no slip on. What kind of woman are you? And so then we begin to attach that to our self-worth. We begin to attach that to who we are. And at the end of the day, if I show up in sweats or if I show up looking bad with my bacon pack pants suit on, it doesn't change who I am. And it doesn't change what I bring to the table because what I bring to the table is internal, not external. And so it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm not telling you to show up looking crazy because I think there's time and a place where you do. But don't let that dictate you. Like you're not going to make me feel some kind of way. Like as, at the end of the day, generational bondage is absolutely real, right? And so, hey, Marilyn, hey, how are you, love? Hey, Joan, thank you so much. And so I think that for, listen, sweats all day. Like, I can rock some sweat. I, can, I will preach a message in some sweats. And I dare you to tell me I can't. That is something wrong with me if I'm not suited up, booted up, if I'm, you know, whatever. Like, I have to be, like, I just, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'd rather be free in sweats than bound up in my skirt down to my ankles. It, it ain't happening. It's just, it's not happening. The older I get, the more relaxed my fashion for myself is a reputation of who I am now. Absolutely, and we evolve. So, like, whereas I used to love dressing up, I love dressing up, but I prefer sweats. I prefer comfy clothes. I prefer warm and fuzzy socks. I prefer... I just do. Now, my husband loves me a heel, so every now and then I will rock some cute heels and, you know, do my little walk, but that's me, right? Stilettos, I'm not so sure about, but I can get, like, you know, a little heel. Like, you know, it's, I'm not here, but I'm, like, here. You know, the stilettos make me, you got my booty all popped up, and I'm, like, I'm feeling like I'm a tip over. You know, I can't do that, y'all, but, you know... But at any rate, let me go so I can get my baby up. Y'all got me out here talking. So, but I hear the thing that I just want to say to you all is, is um, really just in that the whole point of the conversation for us is to investigate, you know, as, um, um, as, as Andy said, is, you know, for us to, you know, check those generational, uh, that generational bond is check, really just check where, the, where that internal message is coming from. And it could have been modeled before you that, and you don't know, like some of that stuff we just take with us 
And not because anybody said we had to, but because that's what we saw. And so I just want you to know that you can feel good even if you don't look good, right? There's a saying like, if I look good, I feel good. And a lot of times we look good and we don't feel good. Like the look good is to cover up the fact that we don't feel good. And so I want you to feel good even when you don't look good. I want, or in your, in, in uh, somebody else's perspective of not looking good. Because for me, if I'm in sweats, I look good. Like I'm good in sweats. You may not think I look good in sweats, but I, I feel like I, I'm good in sweats. I'm just as effective in sweats as I am in my thigh high boots with my cute little suit and my jacket made up i'm just as effective it just you just like the way that i look but i don't i'm not gonna let the, the fact that you like the way that i look determine the fact that now i have to do this all the way because now i'm gaining your likes no nah, we're not doing that we're not gonna do that and neither are you so i want y'all to be empowered this week i want y'all to know that you are loved this week i want you to know that um, you are valuable and you are worthy and not because of what you do and not because of what you have, but because of the God who has blessed us to be beautiful and to, has blessed us to be smart and intelligent and has blessed us just to be, right? And so go out and be powerful. Go out and be amazing. Go out and be dope, right? Be dope today. I'm about to make something to say be dope today, right? Go be dope. And it doesn't matter what you wear, it doesn't matter, you know, whether you wear makeup or not, you're dope just because God says you're dope, because God created you to be dope, period. And so I love y'all, y'all have an awesome day. Share this message with everybody you know, specifically every woman you know, because I know we as women struggle with this, right? That self-worth over net worth, that we got to have things to make us feel good. And so I want you to feel good whether you have things or not. And so I love y'all. Y'all have an awesome week. I'll see y'all next Monday for the Morning Life Scope. Um, and go be dope.